Welcome. E aí, galera, beleza? Bem-vindo à nossa comunidade. Welcome to our community. Hey, what's going on, guys? It is OGC here. Welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to look at some PVPs specifically from uh, yesterday's Clash of Fate. Uh, long story short, this is just high-end PVP. So if you want to see uh, actual good players go out and uh, compete, we can take a peek at uh, their, their replays and see how they are doing. And let's check this out. So the first one that we're going to start off with, uh, this is going to be uh, Mr. Chip going up against GG. So the, these players for reference, if, if you guys need full reference for things, they're both probably, I, I don't know, 200 and uh, or 2700k core power, somewhere around there. They're, they're both very strong. So uh, we're going to see Sylph versus Human. A couple important things. First thing, GG in this fight has no dragon. That, that's pretty significant. Um, and for an idea of how strong these people are, they, they are they are extremely strong. So GG has 216 HP swordsmen. Their archers have uh, 250,000 attack archers. So that's massive. Mr. Chip uh, has 216,000 archers and his trees have uh, a lot of HP. Uh, 3,800k. So, Mr. Chip, very, very strong as well. And also, a special shout out for Mr. Chip. Uh, please go check out Bag O Chips and subscribe to his his YouTube channel if you want to see more for uh, Mr. Chip and all of his his gameplay. He is phenomenal. Uh, I look up to him a lot and respect him a, a lot as, as a player and and as a person. He's an awesome person. So. Go check out his stuff if you want to see more high-end uh, PvP. So Chip is using a Silver Turtle versus Gold Turtle. And Mr. Chip's Dragon, if we look at it, it has the Blessed Noble Blood. One, two, three, four Blessed Purples and Blessed Humanoid. When it comes to stats, Mr. Chip got a, a, a little bonus. 24% um, increased damage from, from winning Might. Uh, Mr. Chip wasn't penalized too much for the magic. He lost stamina completely, and he won command. And by the way, for the record, look at that Rufio damage. His Rufio did so much damage. It outperformed Jackson. It outperformed Mako. Oh, my gosh. So we'll have to keep an eye on Mr. Chip's Rufio. So let me just restart this so that it's had normal PvP speed. So it looks like uh, Mr. Chip is using Fenris, and on the top is uh, is the Jax for GG. Down here on the bottom, Mr. Chip has, has his Jax, a bunch of archers. And uh, I see Mr. Chip's uh, Rufio going in. So his Rufio, his Rufio, uh, sorry about the pop-up, made it in deep, and his Whirlwind from Rufio actually took out like half the health of uh, a backline of the archers now did the deep impact to sun up a bunch of things which also killed cleo this boss side by the way mr chips just winning i'm really interested in following this rufio this rufio is massive absolutely massive and then he does a, a whirlwind over with the rufio so the rufio is up top now unbelievable rufio plays this is like next level stress. Whirlwind again. Takes out the jacks. Oh my gosh. And look at this. The, the sylph trees, when, when they are fully maxed out, guys, they are so tanky. It's not even funny. But Mr. Chip ends up uh, pulling, pulling out the, the victory. Um, I think my, my favorite thing from this fight is uh, literally just watching his Rufio. His Rufio did so much. So there, there's a lot more to this fight than, than simply the, the Rufio. But uh, that's the big takeaway I got from this is Rufio is a beast. All right, let, let's, let's jump into the next one. All right, I'll, I'll save mine. I'll save mine for the end. All right, guys. It's, it's not from Clash of Fate, but uh, I go up against uh, somebody with core power of... 2800k so they're they're well over 600k higher core than me so this one is kira's going up against uh, jackie chan so we'll actually get to see dwarf and how dwarf performs so for reference sake 
this is not 15 chakra huntresses they, they don't even have 900k hp uh the dwarf player has over a hundred uh or a, a thousand k hp um uh, mechs super tanky mechs and their snipers uh their snipers could could have more more attack but their snipers is still pretty strong the dragon that the enemy is using is blessed true shot which is is really weird i i okay uh and no noble blood aha we have the eternal void wow i like i like this onyx and blessed war song wow okay so let's see who won the stats and it looks like kira's won all of the stats and like ba barely lost the magic so let, let's let's check this one out and we can see right at the beginning oh my gosh look at all those black holes I don't think Kyrus loses too many units, so we aren't going to see too many from the uh, the second uh, void thing from the dragon. But it looks like the Huntresses are just able to run right around uh, the, the bottom down there and make it onto the enemy jacks with Bane. Like, it's taking a lot to take out these, these mechs. But because it's taking so long to, to take out the mechs, the Huntresses just run right, right around. You know, on on this top side, uh, the the, the mechs on, on the top are cleared out. Mechs really are pretty tanky. Okay, and now he uses the black hole just to slow down every everything else. Mechs are really tanky, guys. But that 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 big of a zerg from Huntresses with a uh, with a war war song dragon, really impressive overall. Ian Kira did an amazing job. Jackie Chan, a good opponent, a good foe, uh, but for this fight, Kira ended up coming through. And it goes through, kill, kills off the mechs. All right, so let, let's jump into the next fight that I have. We have Kira versus uh, Chu Zhang. So this is Sylph versus uh, Human. And let's just check out the human's dragon. Alright, this is not a bad uh, legendary dragon. He's missing noble blood. Uh, but he has everything else to fight humans. The blessed humanoid will help with reducing uh, some of the archer damage. And look look at this. Kira's, Kira's has level 14 archers. He's not even max out. His archers have a, a 100k attack. Th th that, that's absolutely crazy. This human player is not in that bad of a shape. He's got 161k HP uh, swords, and he's got 172k attack archers. So he's he's not in that bad of a shape. And when it comes to stats, uh, Kira's actually won all stats. So Kira's, uh, I, I don't know how much honor Kira, Kira's has, but um, Kira's is doing something right. So even though he is under underpowered compared to troop levels, uh, what appears to be temple and, and everything else. Kira's makes up for by winning all of the sets. That's why farming the honor, boys and girls, is so important. Get out there and farm that honor. So it's actually interesting because uh, the human player has some spears. So his bomb size completely wiped out. He, he's screwed down there. Um, but the top side with all, all of those spears, I would think that it would work out, but the spears are going up against the archers. Spears against archers usually are not a good thing if if the archers have support from a melee unit, which they do in this case. Then back down to the, this uh, bottom side, very close fight in in the bottom. The right now the two sides are pretty much sawed out uh, completely. Except for this bottom, so this bottom is now now dropping because uh, Chu Long only has two packs of archers. One is almost fully dead, and and now now uh, I mean now the Fenris's wolves are down there. They're pretty much fully wiped out. And the second pack is right here for the human, and they're actually getting blinded by by Kira's uh, Belrog, and or stunned. So because of that, their their damage output is minimal at best. And this whole whole time, Kira's has uh, he still has 
at least two packs of archers still up, which means that if if both uh, if both of the the front lines, if both of the front lines uh, get stuck and neither one's gaining progress, but the enemy has all of their archers dead and you still have all of your archers alive, you're going to win. Uh, th there's no way that the the front line swords from from the human player is enough to even come close to com combating. So that's a solid win right there for, for Kira's. And if we check out the, the next ones, so this is uh this is actually Toby versus GG. Woo! Toby versus GG. So uh for, for perspective sakes, uh GG has 224k HP. Uh, I'm sorry, Toby. Toby has 224k HP swords. Um GG has 216, Toby has 255,000 attack archers, GG is pretty much the, the same. And if we compare the dragons, uh, Toby has three purples, yeah, three three purples, uh, no, Noble Blood? Is there a Noble Blood? Yes, Noble Blood and Hero Predation on his dragon. He's going up against GG who has three purples, Noble Blood, and Hero Predation. When we check the stats, GG actually won in Might, Magic, and Samna. The only thing Toby won was Command. So let, let's go check check this fight out. This is this is massive. This is massive. Uh, we 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 need to restart this one at at the appropriate speed. And I want to keep keep an eye on Toby's uh, lines. So both both. Uh, both are using very similar formations. They're just flipped in inverse. So Toby has the double archers on the top. Uh, GG is actually getting Cleoed. And Toby goes in with the deep impact from Rufio. So GG's archers in the back line just got destroyed uh, as far as their HP. And now, uh, now GG is finally doing Cleo for the first time. But they're doing it on the bottom side, so they're pretty much pulling back swordsmen. All of Toby's uh, uh, archers are on the top, and Toby pretty much has the top. So GG is pulling back the swordsmen from from the bottom. But I I think it's 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 too late at that point. And then is that Bane? Yeah, Toby has a Bane in the middle of of, of the enemies, like in the back line. Look at that Bane. Jax is just firing into the Bane and it's not doing anything. Okay, Bane's going down now. And Bane finally dropped. That took so long for GG to take out Toby's Bane. It is unreal. And now at, at this point, GG has uh, Jax, which is out of ammo. And he has half of a archer squad. Toby has uh, two full archer squads. Jax with no ammo and the the fire mage. It I mean it's pretty much all over at this point. Toby's just going to come cir circle around and fi finish uh, GG off. Absolutely massive. So that that Cleo into the Rufio taking out all of that that DPS. Um, massive, massive. We're seeing some big uh, big Rufio plays, and we're seeing some Titans go at it, human on human action. Absolutely amazing fight. Good, good job, Toby. Uh, if you guys are a Toby fan, uh, write, write uh, go Toby in the comments below. If you guys are a Chip fan, write go Chip in the comment section below. If you guys are a MM Chan fan, type MM Chan uh, in, in the comment section below. And all right, so let, let's jump into the, the next one. Now, this is Toby going up against Pac. What's interesting about this is uh, Peck actually has the, the Lightning Dragon with Her Hero Pred, but Toby goes up against this person. This person is pretty strong, and Toby flaw flawlessly wins, doesn't even lose a single hero, uh, and won all stats except for uh, Magic. And we can see both power sides actually get paired up against each other. Toby does the Black Hole. What does he do next? I, I miss what whatever he did next. Oh, oh, I see. He's got the Rufio in the back now. That Rufio, I need to see that again, guys. Where 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 did that Rufio come from? Alright, so 
to- Toby's Rufio is in the back by by uh, by Pex Dragon. Then Rufio jumps back over. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, one of the reasons why I love to watch Toby is this one replay and the one before. We could actually make a 30-minute video out of just one of those going through all of the finer details of positioning his army and all of the little intricate things that come come with PvP. But what makes Toby different than other people, in, in, in my opinion, is he is so aggressive. It is unreal. Absolutely unreal. So good, good job. Good job. Now, I, I, know, I know what you guys are all saying. You guys are saying, oh, that, that's great. Uh, T- Toby wins as long as he has all of his units. So what happens if we take a look at Toby with no dragon? No turtle. So Toby has no dragon, no turtle. Toby has Avalon. He has no Virian. No Jax. Does he have Mako? He has Mako, so no, no, uh, he's missing everything. He doesn't have Bane, doesn't have Balrog, doesn't have Virian, doesn't have Jax, uh, missing out on so much. Oh, he does have the turtle. No dragon going up against a, a player who has this a blessed humanoid, blessed humanoid, blessed noble blood, human player. And Toby lost in might and magic. So Toby is pretty much down and out from from what what we can tell. No Jax, no Virian as a, as a human player. Uh, does he have Cleo? He does have Cleo. Um, n- no Bane, no Belrog, no no real tankiness, and having no Virian. Woo! Good luck with those swords. So let, let's watch this one and see if Toby can survive this. So the enemy player has everything that they need. Toby has very little. And you can see Toby's uh, two packs of, of Zen Templars getting uh, suck because of the black hole. Will the Templars even make it in time? Oh man, the, the enemy player now has a uh, moral boost. But since... Since the enemy player did a black hole trying to, to negate the Zen Templars, what happened was Avalon was on the bottom. Avalon w- w- was on the bottom down here giving Warhorn to two packs of archers. So that's cool that the enemy did the, the Cleo black hole up there, but that just allowed two packs of, of uh, Avalon archers to just go, go ham on this bottom side. Be mindful when you do open up with, with the Cleo hole. If you totally ignore um, a- Avalon and the Warhorn that he puts out right at the beginning, that could be detrimental to you. I see Black, Black Hole as being uh, the, the best to counter Warhorn, especially against the human archers. But um, no, nonetheless, uh, to- Toby came out, although he was missing so much no dragon no Jax, no virian no bane no belrog um no problem for mr toby he still comes out swinging and pulls up a big w out of this and i this video will be over soon since i i'm running out, out of batteries so the the last one uh i'll i'll show you guys this um I think I have to scroll so you guys can see it. Aha, uh-huh, there we go. So my core power, I, I'm pretty much 2100. That's my core power. And I go up against somebody, number two here. So the Garfield person with 2800 uh, core power. I will show you that. It's not from Clash. It's, it's from last night. And if we so if we look at the stats, I lost in all stats except for Might. So this is not Clash, so we have borrowed turtles in this. Um, but I lost in all stats except for Might. And the enemy is using Hero Pred with uh, three purples and uh, the, the initial surge. His swords are lacking a little bit. And how strong is his Jax? 260k thousand damage Jax. What? This is important. See how strong his Jax is? I'll, I'll show you my Jax real, real quick. My Jax has 223. So his Jax has 260,000 attack. That's important. That's important. 
So let, let's jump in and watch this. So his power side's on, on the bottom down there with, with Jax, mine's on, on the top. Um, and right right away I open up with the, the black hole and then I go into Warix putting out his lanterns. Just trying to reduce his, his enemy hero damage. You can see my, my Belrog. Belrog is going to be huge in this. My Belrog's health is really low right now. It's about halfway down. And my swords are tanking stuff up. Up top I'm doing completely fine. But I, on, on the bottom I, I am losing out. His archers have, have moral boosts. Things are not looking good. He jumped his, his, uh, his uh, Rufio in. And then we did a sword resurrection to buy out time for this bottom area. Well, well, we finished clearing up top. As soon as we can clear out top, we'll, we'll be in very good shape. But what gets interesting, and the reason why I, I won this is, his, his Jax is getting stunned and blinded by my Belrog pretty much this entire fight. So we are 35 seconds in and Jax is down two ammo shells. That, that's how much damage his, his Jax has been able to put out because his Jax keeps getting stunned up by Belrog. Look at that. We're 40 seconds in and his Jax still has only consumed two, two of uh, his ammo things. So if, uh, if you get really lucky with your Belrog placement, we're almost 50 seconds in and his Jax, is, it, 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 his Jax just wasn't shooting for just about 50 seconds. It only dropped down maybe... 30% of Jax's total ammo. There, there was no reload or anything like that. Um, so then I, I swing around again, take, take him out. So if you do get lucky and your Belrog ends up hitting the, the enemy Jax, you're in great shape. That's one of the reasons why I prefer to do the spray and pray on my Jax as opposed to letting my Jax just run around. But anyways, this video is getting too long. Thank you guys for uh, checking out this and seeing some higher end uh, PvP plays. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like this video, share these videos, subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Tomorrow we will have uh, our OGC episode uh, returning along with a challenge for the community. Do you want to take part in this challenge? Stick around, you'll find out what it is uh, tomorrow. And on Wednesday we will have pretty much the greatest video of all time when it comes to dragons coming out. It's not, not going to be anything... Uh, I'm not going to be showing off. I'm going to show you how to get a perfect dragon fast with minimal cost. So take care, guys. And until next time, uh, stay safe on Drake and or Nor.